Hi everybody, Renegade67 and or 68 here with some more Let's Play stream Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works of the Blind Variety. So last time on the Let's Play streaming Fate Blind Work thing that we're doing. Um so things were looking like they were maybe being a little repetitive. Where well, I mean Rin and Rin being here is not repetitive. But then Saber's showing up again, using the command spell to summon Saber again, um, is kind of repetitive. Granted, we did it uh, in advance instead of doing it on the fly. <laughs> on the fly, get it? Because we were thrown out the window when we did it in timeline one. Um, so it's a little different in that case. But then it became more different because Ryder seems to be dead, maybe. Um, and Caster seems like she might be here. So... I'm interested in what this might be setting up with the idea of a Shinji Redemption arc, but I've had a couple thoughts about this whole scenario. It's inevitable, a weekend, I have time to think. Um, so thought two is related to the I thought one, thought two, skip to thought two, we'll talk about thought, thought one next. Thought two is the idea of the Shinji Redemption arc. They could do it, but it would be weird actually. Um, and the main reason it would be weird right now is because we don't really understand the full extent of Shinji's douchebaggery. Like, we know he's fucking with Sakura somehow, but we don't really know how. We think he did something with Ayako, but we don't really know the extent of that. We don't understand uh, his relationship with Makiri. There's a lot of unknowns, so it's possible they set up a fake-out redemption arc where it seems like he's being redeemed. And the last minute he's like, Ha-ha! All along, I was the douchebag you thought I was! I can't be redeemed! Um... I guess they could do that, but that's almost like, well, I mean... He seemed like such an obvious douchebag. Uh, and I don't know if it, yeah, is it in his character to do that? Maybe if he's, uh... Maybe Makiri instructs him to, but does he really have the cojones to do that? Cajones? I don't know. I'm making up words now. Um, that's that's not a made-up word. Cajones is a real word. I just don't know where it comes from. Um, I don't remember the exact meaning of it. But, thought number one. Mm. Shinji Redemption Art could potentially still work, but it would just, timing would be weird. Uh, and then thought number one is that, uh, because we're doing these in reverse, is that even though the potential dynamic of adding Shinji into our friend group-ish is intriguing it, the actual twist aspect of what's going on here seems to have fallen on its face unless there's something I'm still missing which I'd like to you know if you know, hopefully there is but the reason I say that is because these characters don't seem to know what's going on and you know when they see Ryder dead on the ground they're like oh my gosh what's going on but it's impossible for me as the Raider to sympathize because I've already seen the Scullies and I know from timeline one that means Caster's mucking about and so they show Ryder dead. They built up to it in a really big way um, with the implication that, oh shit, something huge is happening. And then it's just, oh, Caster took over. Ryder's dead now. Oh, okay. That doesn't seem like that big of a deal, really. If they had shown off Ryder being dead before we'd seen the Scullies, then we would have been like, oh, who took over? And then they could have shown off it being Caster, theoretically, if that was going on. But by showing the Scullies first, this becomes sort of a a uh, a failed twist in a way, unless again there's more to it than just oh we're fighting Caster now. But <clears throat> okay, so that's thought number two and thought number one. Uh, anyway, so let's see. Will there be a Shinji Redemption arc? Will there be more to the twist than oh it's just Caster? Let's find out. Well, you're right. There's no harm in letting you be, even if you have your command spells. It might be annoying having you run around, but a harmless insect can't kill humans. Actually, it is potentially dangerous having Shinji run around because we know Caster is a command spell stealer, so she could potentially steal his spells. Even if she doesn't have Ryder to access, she could maybe use them for another servant. I think that's a thing. Um, the twist part is that her neck literally got jackhammered out. Well, sure, but that means nothing to me, really. Again, unless there's more that's leading up to, if it's just, oh, Caster has some kind of jackhammer weapon, then that doesn't mean much to me, really. Unless the implication with the jackhammer thing is that there's more to the twist, in which case, maybe there is. Um, but I'll wait for the game to reveal that to me in that case, because if it's just, 
oh, Caster has some other attack. Unless that other attack implies something major about or revelations about Caster, then fair, fair, fair. Um, but anyways, uh, it might be annoying having you run around, but a harmless insect can't kill humans. But yeah, I think there's a couple different problems with letting Shinji just run around. Um, problem number one, what if Ilya just kills him again? But yeah, that's not necessarily a problem. I mean, uh, uh, problem number one is that we don't know what's going on necessarily with Ayako and how much is going on there. We don't know if we, we I don't know if Rin knows about the whole grandfather connection, but the grandfather's in on it and making the moves. Shinji could potentially have more things he could do even without a servant. Possibility number three is that Caster might be able to steal his spells and do something with them. Possibility number four is that he might do something gnarly with Sakura or something that we can't control. So I think there's a lot of potential issues with just having Shinji run around, even without a servant, I'm going to be honest. But, anyways. <clears throat> so, yeah, I won't kill you here, depending on your response. But yeah, it seems like, based on the circumstances, he still set up the seal, and he was still planning to do all the gnarly stuff, and then Caster just stopped everything. Um, or rather, Caster went and killed Ryder, um, theoretically. And so he was clearly planning this big thing, planning to turn against us, so... If anything, we're sort of saved by Caster, but not really. We probably could have uh, made it work anyways, but... <clears throat> I guess, I don't want to say that we were saved by Caster, and more so, um... Caster made it so that the build-up to some big battle with Shinji was just sidestepped, which is fine, because we already got a big enough-ish battle in Timeline 1, if they are intending to do something different with Shinji. <clears throat> yeah, he's not gonna like that, but what's he gonna do about it? Insect? Uh, I'm a harmless insect. You should thank me for not comparing you to a noxious insect. How is Shinji gonna react to this? Because he is, he all, he's such a big ego, bigger ego than Rin, I'd say. And he can't really back it up as much, clearly. I told you that you're harmless since Mato Shinji is fit to be neither a magus nor a master. So tell me if you saw it. That's the only value in you right now. <laughs> He's still scared for his life, though. That fear for his life suggests that maybe his grandpappy has uh, abused him in some way. Um, I mean, because if he was just afraid of Tosaka attacking him, I guess that could just show he's a coward in general, but where does the cowardice come from if, he, if he's always so big talk? I would almost think that he'd be someone that wouldn't start showing this fear until she would actually attack him, but she's just showing a meanie face and he's getting nervous about it. That makes me think his grandpappy might be abusing him to some extent. And then maybe by extension, he tries to abuse Sakura to make himself feel better? Possibly. Uh, uh. Shinji retreats, being pushed by Tosaka's pressure. I don't know if Tosaka's serious or just threatening. But. She's seriously angry. It's very fair to be angry in this situation. I mean, it's even more fair because she was caught off guard and almost got screwed. And kind of, sort of got saved by Caster, but not really. They still had to waste a command spell. I know, I, uh, yeah, I'm aware that, um... I'm aware that Shinji doesn't have a command spell, but Ren doesn't really either right now. Uh, her servant's... I guess maybe Shinji doesn't know this, but her servant is not around. And Shiro's servant's not around either. He's busy getting maybe trapped by Caster. I'd say the biggest possible twist, if they're not... <laughs> the, the biggest possible twist, if there's no real twist, let me put it like that. If it's just Caster, the biggest possible twist is that Caster does just take over Saber, and then me and Rin have to fight Saber. 
Um, that could certainly be narratively interesting, but it would beg the question of why she would, if she can still all, if she can already take over, um, Sabra begs the question of why she waited so long in timeline one. Maybe it was just let other people run about their stuff. And in this timeline, she didn't want to wait because she knew she had to be proactive because Archer was now an issue for her. That's a fair assumption, I guess. Anyways, she's seriously angry. She has lost her calmness after seeing the tragic scene here. Come on, what kind of servant killed your servant, Shinji? <laughs> I don't know, you idiot! You're the one who should be cowering in fear! You guys are the next target! Mm. And he just runs away? You! Okay, he just runs away. Interesting. Interesting. Him running away actually leads towards the idea of a redemption arc, I feel. I think more so than if he doesn't run away. I think if he doesn't run away, he might be trying to play some kind of long con. Um, now, that doesn't necessarily mean that's exactly where it's going. But if he just gets killed, like it's nothing, then that means they're just doing nothing with his character. And I suppose they could fully just do flesh him out or whatever in Timeline 3, but I feel building towards that would be better. Doing something with him. <clears throat> uh, and also, if they were just gonna, you know, snap him like that, they would have just snapped him along with Ryder. And it, it would have just been that we would have found them both dead. Because he's still alive, I feel like he has to have a purpose to still be alive. Uh, for, in Timeline 1, uh, his purpose for still being live was to show off Ilya's ruthlessness. Um, and also so that Shiro wouldn't have to, uh, kill a master as he's not quite there yet in his internal mental state. So, we'll see. You? Shinji runs out into the hallway and Tosaka starts to go after him. Okay, that's fun. Have a nice lover spat. I mean, don't lovers too much with him. I know you uh, like me more. <clears throat> but Tosaka stops if she realizes something. She has to stay behind to protect me? No, that's wrong. Chigao, yo. It's not that she noticed something. She's just watching the students on the floor and biting her lips in vexation. You want to help them out in some way? Better to help them than to go after Shinji, or better to go after Shinji so he can't attack anyone else. But what's he going to do without a servant? Good question. He might be able to do a lot without a servant. Ooh, he might be able to make a desperation play that does something grody. <clears throat> this also double begs the question of what's happening with um, Ayako. Because uh, my mind was like, okay, Ryder did something to her and made her some kind of time bomb. But if Ryder's out of the question, then that makes me infer that um that maybe it was actually uh uh i'm for derping on his name what shinji's grandpapi i forget whatever the name was Mak makiri anyways makes me think maybe he did something to ayako which is why it would still affect even if rider's gone question mark question mark exclamation point unless rider's not really gone and it's a fake out and she body swapped to ayako because rider and cast are the same person so they have the same abilities right Friend knows anything about Gramps? Um, she would know he's the real threat? Mm, maybe. If she knows anything about Gramps, though, I think she'd be more worried about the family having a Magus in the war. Yes, his name is very much... I mean, they haven't said his name. They haven't said Grandpappy's name. But they've said Makiri. We know Ilya said, oh, um, you're Makiri's whatever. And so I'm like, okay, so Shinji's got a connection to Makiri and he's got a Grandpappy. It's a guess, but... That's what I'm thinking. I could be wrong, but I said, until I'm confirmed otherwise, I'm just going to assume Grandpappy is Makiri. <clears throat> Anyways, she's just watching the students on the floor and biting her lips in vexation. <clears throat> her face is that of Tosaka Rin, but her knees are shaking and her eyes are wavering as if they are about to cry. Yeah, because you feel responsibility here to an extent. You should have been prepped for something like this, and you just underestimated Shinji's ruthlessness. 
That's a good way to put it. Dash, 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 dash. I don't know if she's filled with sorrow or vexation. Why not both? But that tells me. She's firm, can do everything, and is a mature magus. Okay, back to Rin's sexualness for a little bit. But she's just a girl of her age on the inside. And man, do I want to see inside. <clears throat> what do we have dragon sex with Rin? Do we get real sex with Rin? Okay. <clears throat> It's fine, Tosaka. Everyone's still breathing. It's not over yet. Oh, that reminds me. Daijobu. Uh, speaking of the Japanese language, uh, I've been reading more of Liar Game, and it's been really interesting seeing what the differences are between um, the manga and the live-action version. And I assume they're only going to get more and more. It's I've been kind of getting some plot twists that, like, aren't even really plot twists. I mean, they're plot, but, like, they're bigger plot twists because I've seen the live-action first. And granted, there's some stuff that I just knew in advance, of course. But there's some stuff that um, I'm like, oh, I know how this works. Wait, that's not how that works. And it's different, so it catches me more off guard. But, um... Ah. Anyways... It's fine, Dosaka. Everyone's still breathing. It's not over yet. Shiro is so mentally unstable that in stressful situations, he overflows to the absolutely stable? Eh. Um. I mean, I feel like he's become more stable after Timeline 1. He's still got issues with him. But I think at this point, I would argue he's more mentally stable than Tosaka is. <laughs> Huh? Everyone's breathing? Oh, is she freaking out because she wonders how he knows that? He knows because he has awesome magical senses. Yeah, it might be hard, but take a good look. Everyone's alive. The boundary field is gone, so all we have to do now is call for help. この場合は救急車か。それとも違うところか。魔術による絆なら、教会に連絡を入れるべきなのか。あ、どうだ、フィワルコンタクトチャーチ。キュレイズフィ、オルトフィユドゥダット、ゲッツアウェイフォーランタ
There's a phone there, so she should be able to make a call right away. Okay, focusing on calling for help. Good, good, good. If memory serves, Shiro, I don't even know if he worried about calling for help in the other timeline. I think that... Well, no, because Ryder had to do an escape. That's right. Saber was sort of winning the fight, so Ryder did, like, an attack, escape at once. And then we were able to call sort of off-screen in the falling action. And Shiro didn't even think much of it and didn't really care. That's right. He didn't even think about how he saved everybody there. And that was when I was starting to really understand how fucked up Shiro was. But, um... But, yeah, in this case, we're calling midway and not waiting until the, the fighting has died down. Which is probably the more healthy response. Even if it potentially gives us a worse fighting position. We finish contacting the church and go outside. We're going outside? What about the Scullies? What about Saber? So Saber's 100% getting mind controlled by Caster, right? Isn't that the only through line here? What? Why are you going outside? It'd be troublesome for us if we were the only ones unharmed. So Kotomine ordered us to pretend that we weren't here today. Sure. Wait, what? We just cut? We just, wait, we're talking, wait, are you talking to Saber mentally or is she right here? Saber, were you fighting Caster? Yes. Was a servant of servant. What? They off-screened it? Are you kidding me? I thought there was some big climax happening here. I mean, not a climax, but like, I thought this was going to be a big, a big thingy. They just off-screened it? Oh, lame. Yes, it was Servant Caster that was controlling those golems. I defeated Caster, but I'm sure that was only her shadow. Okay, so, couple possibilities here. Number one, Saber is now a sleeper agent for Caster. Number two, Caster just ran away, which meant she had a really important reason for attacking today. Um... If she just ran away, you wanted less saber interludes. I thought we like would fight. I thought Caster would, wouldn't be wouldn't be such a pussy in this fight. Um, so this has to just be for Shinji character development, I guess. But even if it is, there's got to be Caster motivation um, because she didn't do this in the last timeline. So either her master was close by and wasn't last time, or she tried to turn Saber into some sleeper agent, or she like she theoretically would have done this because of uh being afraid of archer but um if she did this because she was afraid of archer and wanted to take a leg up on him and then just ran away there's really no point which to, to me tells me that it wasn't about being a leg up on archer but disrupting Ryder's boundary field which means her master was there and she wanted to save him or something or saber's a sleeper agent now I mean, even if the characterization reason was just to get something interesting about Shinji going forward, a caster still has to have proper motives, or it just seems like, what the fuck was the point? Uh, I don't get it. Alright, keep going, game. I don't get it. I'm sure that was only her shadow. Dash, dash, dash. And what's the point of the idea that, oh, Caster was killed by some such and such weapon? I guess that's leading to some twist. So what's the point? I don't know. Like, beyond just Saber's a sleeper agent now, I can't think of much of a point. I see. So it means Caster was controlling those bone creatures from the Udo Temple. Yes, and we the player already knew that, so that's nothing special. Then Caster was the one who attacked Shinji's servant. In theory, but she attacked him in a weird way. What what's the significance of that? Do you have any ideas? The fourth master at our skill would be Caster's master? I thought that was something that Rin had an idea of, but then when Shiro's like, no, Shinji's doing it, she's like, oh shit, 
I didn't realize that there was so is that really the idea that Ryder Caster's Master is there? Considering Caster, it's possible to use Shinji to lure Ryder into a trap. Sure, but what's the point? Why now? She never did that in the other timeline. I suppose the idea is that her master was not at the school in the other timeline, but she they were this time to snoop on Rin, maybe, because she takes Archer as more of a threat. Um... I suppose so she felt it necessary to step in whereas in the other timeline she was okay to have them just fight it out I guess but to me I felt like they were really building towards kind of an interesting fight situation then instant de-escalation it's very weird to me it really killed my my mojo let's do to archer fucking over the temple she had to relocate her master Oh, she moved her master, the idea that she moved her master to the school because of relocating? As if the temple was compromised? Uh, does that mean she's not at the temple anymore? Because, I mean, where is Assassin then? Oh. I don't know, this whole thing seems poorly executed, whatever's going on. I'm going to be honest, but... Mm. It's possible to use Shinji to lure Ryder into a trap. So this one. I believe so. According to you, Ryder had her head cut off in one blow. I imagine that she was held, constrained, and that she was killed without resisting. It's troublesome. We found out Caster's master is at my school. It wasn't completely meaningless. The problem with this is because... Ugh, ugh, ugh. This is one of those things that unless Shiryo can pull knowledge from another timeline, I don't know how they in-universe now rectify this situation for me asking the question, well, why didn't you do that in the other timeline? And I, I know it's probably, assumedly have to assume it's because of the archer connection but i feel like i have to ask the question of exactly what about that archer connection um but like i can't really ask that question unless shiro starts really pulling knowledge from the other timeline which uh, ruffles my knickers a little bit but i turned to tosaka for confirmation this even being the way of learning that Caster's got a, a master there just seems weird. It just seems weird because like Rin's like, oh yeah, there's a fourth master there. But then it feels like, oh, you're wrong. You just didn't realize Shinji was doing stuff. I feel like if there really was a fourth master and that was the first hints of it, there should have been a more clear, clear distinction idea there. Because uh, I feel like they left the route open for the idea that, oh, she just didn't realize Shinji was being a bullshitter. And so, this revelation feels a lot less lacking than it could, in my opinion. So, if the fourth master is just at the school, my mind... Fourth master? Well, the fourth school master, my mind goes to two possibilities at this point. Possibility number one is that it's Kazuki, because again, he's just done nothing. Um, and possibility two... Possibility two? It might just be Ayako. I, I wasn't thinking this, but I feel like they're pulling a Timeline 1 Sakura. Or rather, she showed up so little in Timeline 1, even though it felt like, oh, she should show up more, and then didn't. And now in Timeline 2, I feel like, okay, we have to get back to her after she goes missing or something. We have to follow, and we just don't. That leads me to think that maybe Ayako just is another master, which I don't want to think. I guess if she's, you know what, it's okay if she's Caster's master, because that means she's being controlled, which means she can still be saved with my penis. So... Uh, I guess I don't mind if Aiko is Caster's master. Because whoever it is is being controlled against their will in theory. So I don't have to, like, hate them and think that they're a douchebag. Aiko being a, a master gives, gives excuse for her to be more important down the line, at least throughout the rest of the two timelines in theory. If she's not, then they're just not showing her a lot because... Because the novel doesn't like her and she's not that important. And I don't want that because I like her. So I guess I want her to be Caster's master. I don't know if I can know. Even though I think it's Kazuki, I want it to be Ayako. Yeah, that sounds correct. I turned to Tosaka for confirmation. 
Torsak only stares back at me silently. Since we left the classroom, Torsak has only been looking at me as if she wants to say something. That she loves me? Torsak, if you want to say something, I'll tell you. If you don't want to say something, I'll tell you. Toshaka, come out and say if you want to say something. I feel weird if you're quiet. <laughs> I'm in fear of not knowing when I'll get hit from behind. Uh? <laughs> dash, dash. Oh yeah, she feels really weird because I was so competent in that situation and she was the one that needed protecting and she's processing it. She's like, Cheryl, I love you. <clears throat> Or maybe she's thinking about talking about their past, like the real past, which it was alluded to before, because maybe now she's become really close to him. Hmm. Tarsaka stares at me for a while with a serious face. She's wavering. She's wavering. She's calling me Emiya, not Shiro again. In the other timeline, she jumped straight onto Shiro and was okay to just be casual about it. Here, she feels too hesitant to call him Shiro because she doesn't want to let out her true feelings as much. Even though she's already slipped a bit and called me Shiro in tense situations. Uh, Emiya kun, you're pretty calm. It's a bit unexpected. Mm, because he's done it before in other timelines. Ooh, is this how we maybe start to get the idea of how he's actually a time universe traveler? Do we get some real hints of that? Beyond just the obvious because he's nothing like his timeline oneself? Says this. I'm not calm. My head got all boiled up too. We both lost our composure out of anger. Yeah, but you were able to keep some of it, like, in your pants, as it were. I mean, kinda. But you figured out everyone's condition. I couldn't do that. She's starting to self-doubt herself a little. So what are you thinking more, Rin? Are you thinking there's something crazy awesome with Shiro? You're right. Or are you thinking there's something weird and wrong with you? I'd say you're right, but not in the way you're thinking. I think you're competent enough. Shiro is just more competent. Uh, I do think there's something wiggly wiggly with your mental state, but not necessarily with your competentness, at least beyond underestimating people. Oh, that? It's nothing much. I was only able to tell since I'm used to seeing dead bodies. Why are you used to seeing dead bodies? You mean from the fire, right? I mean, there's more to it than that, but yeah. Used to seeing dead bodies? Yeah, from the fire. Did you not know? Have we not went over this? Because Kira brought up the fire to me. And I kind of responded, but I guess you don't necessarily know about the whole, the incident and exactly my relation to it in general. Used to seeing dead bodies? Hmm, but you seem to know me from the past. Maybe you don't understand. Was it post-fire or pre-fire when you know me? And I guess you don't necessarily know the circumstances of that. You don't know yet that I'm adopted, I suppose, in this timeline. We haven't brought that up. We walk away while we talk. This place will get rowdy once the ambulances arrive. We'll go to the back gate through the woods and get out of the school from there. I wonder how... This makes me wonder if they have, like, distinct animes, like the original Fate Stay Night, for example, and then the, uh, or the Dean Fate Stay Night, and then the UBW Fate Stay Night. It makes me wonder if they have some kind of clever workarounds to make things more interesting or if they just let anticlimactic things like, oh, Assassin dies off screen and, oh, Ryder is really anticlimactic here because it's subverting timeline one where they had a uh, climactic battle. If they just let those happen or if they have anything clever, it makes me wonder. I'll probably check them out at some point because I am curious. Because these work. Assassin getting killed off screen is fine, I'd say, in timeline one because we can just develop more on him in t later timelines. And then Ryder getting ousted just like that in timeline two is fine because we saw her have a similar climactic uh, moment in a, roughly the same point in the narrative in timeline one. So it works as a nice subversion. 
but seeing them as standalone experiences, I'd wonder it would be very much a letdown, but laughs in the fate animated bait wars. <laughs> Anyways, we'll go um, to the back gate through the woods and get out of the school from there. Status screen updated. Then, oh shoot, what's happening? Oh, is she going to confront you about the fire? Go to the back gate through the woods. Oh, is this the same woods Ryder chased me into? What are we doing in these woods? Nanda. Oh. Saber ga iru to wa odoroita na. Archers here. Oh, I'm surprised Saber's here. Huh, did you show up because uh maybe you saw with your eyes from far away something bad was up or did you just have a sense? Did you have a tingle? Archer tingle. As we make our way to the back gate, we run into the late arriving guy. <coughs> <coughs> Not that a guy arriving late matters much when uh, the important stuff was off-screened. Archer, what are you doing coming so late? Yorin, you're the one who said for him to stay behind. That's the whole reason I had to waste a command spell summoning Saber. If Archer's around, we shouldn't have had to waste a command spell. It's obvious, right? I sensed my master's danger and came here. Uh huh. It makes sense. They have a stronger bond than me and Saber, so. Because Saber said that she can only sense me when I'm in peril danger, but Archer, I guess, can sense just general danger. I sensed my master's danger and came here. Well, it seems I was too late. If Saber is here and Rin is safe, everything's over already, correct? Correct. Yes, it's all over already. I'll let you know what happened while you were taking your time, so listen up. Mm, she's using her son to deflect from the fact that he really should have just been there in the first place, but her emotions couldn't let it happen. Ah, oh, I'm now starting to think. Ayako, if Ayako is Caster's master, if we're to run along that line for a bit, I feel like it explains some of the events here, because as a result of Sakura staying over at my place, Shinji got all butthurt and then maybe made a move against Ayako. And then maybe in response to that, um, if, if Ayako's Caster's uh, master, um, maybe when Shinji tried to do this field or whatever, uh, in like revenge or to make sure Ayako was okay, Caster just took it out. Whereas in the other timeline, Caster did nothing because Shinji didn't really aggravate Ayako in any way. There is an idea there, I suppose. We need to talk to Ayako. Ah. <clears throat> just also, I just want to talk to Ayako because I like her. But also, ah. <laughs> I'll let you know what happened while you were uh, taking your time. So listen up. <laughs> it seems I came at the worst possible time. The two argue, leaving us aside. Well, it's just that Tosaka is yelling at Archer while he's just calmly brushing it off. Those two are intimate as I thought. Rin is angry. Oh, since when did you become such a good judge of character? Well, I guess you were able to uh, see into my heart pretty well. I guess I was your master, though. Um, but, huh. You seem to be a uh, pretty good judge of character when it doesn't come to yourself. Rin is angry because she trusts Archer. Uh, Rin is angry because she trusts Archer. Uh, I think she's also angry because she didn't bother bringing Archer when if Archer was brought in the first place, I wouldn't have had to waste my command spell, which makes her angry at herself, and she's taking it out on Archer, but... And also, Archer's sort of worth taking it out on because he did attack Shiro, so she started go going backwards and being like, if you hadn't done that in the first place, I would have been able to bring you, and then we would have had you there, and sort of trying to turn it into Archer's fault. Uh, I guess in that sense, yeah, she's like Shiro, uh, in Timeline 2 at least, when it's not about herself, and when it's not about himself, 
they're pretty good at uh, reading other people. That does uh, that does flow with the idea of um, servants and masters being similar to each other. Those two are intimate as I thought. Rin is angry because she trusts Archer, and Archer is silently listening because he must feel sorry. If he feels sorry, then the thing he feels sorry for would be attacking Shiro the other day, which I think he does, because I think that was a momentary emotional impulse. I don't think he would do it again, and he probably feels sorry that Rin wasted a command spell as well. I know what she wants to say, but why are you telling me that, Saber? Why? Are you, you, you know what she wants to say? She wants to say we can trust Archer? Is that what she wants to say? I mean, Shiro doesn't seem to be, well... Mm. Shiro kind of is opposed to Archer, but he's not opposed to Rin, which I think is the important part. <laughs> well, you had a difficult face, so I merely explained the situation to you. Hmm, you had a difficult face. I guess you just it's an inherent difficult face whenever Archer's around, I suppose. I don't know what's so funny, but Saber's smiling mean- Oh, <laughs> meaningfully. <laughs> First I said meanly, and I'm like, how do you do a mean smile? I mean, Tosok is pretty good at mean smiles, if, if we're being honest. But, um, hmm. Ellipses. I like it even less. <laughs> Maybe it is a mean smile, then. Uh, you don't like that she's accepting of Archer. But of course she'd be accepting of Archer, because Archer is Shiro from the future past, and she likes Archer, even if he is a little fucked up at times. Wait, yeah, wait, yeah. Fine, fine. I won't worry about style next time. Let's say it's good for now. So which servant was eliminated? Ryder, kind of a nobody. We barely saw her in this timeline. Certainly not enough to make for a satisfying conclusion if there weren't other timelines for her. Archer's expression changes. But yeah, I'm, oh man, man, we learned like nothing about Ryder. Because we still don't know her true name. I feel like that should be important. Are they really going to save that twist? That feels like they're making Ryder a big deal for timeline 3. Unless Ryder is caster and, you know, <laughs> plot twist. Um, If they're saving her true name, maybe it is related to Shinji being related to Sakura having some plot twist. Possibly. Because what true names have we learned versus not learned at all? We know Saber's true name. We know Assassin's true name. Uh, Saber, Assassin. We know Berserker's true name. We know Lancer's true name. Yeah, Saber, Assassin, Berserker, Lancer. And then there's Caster and Ryder. We both don't know. They could be the same name. Har har. Uh, and then Archer. And then we know Gilgamesh. So yeah, Archer, who might just be Shira from the future past. And then Caster and Ryder, who may be the same person. I solved it. His usual, uh, ironic composure disappears, and he looks like a cold warrior now. Mm. Servant Ryder was eliminated. I don't know how it happened, but she must have been defeated by Caster. Mm. Archer has history. By Caster. Then what happened to Caster? Do not tell me she's unwounded. I mean, Saber fought her, but she ended up being like a uh, Kage Bunshin no Jutsu, so she was never really there all along. I don't know that either. But Ryder was defeated in one blow. So I think Caster's unwounded. I say so, representing the three of us. Then, does he get upset for some reason? Who are you talking about? Ryder? Hmm, what a fool. I guess she was just all talk. Do you mean Ryder? Or do you mean Caster? Huh. Because if you mean Ryder, that suggests you know some stuff about Ryder, even though you never really interacted with Ryder before. Uh, Ryder did talk a big game when she was confronting me in the forest, but you, in theory, weren't around for that. I guess you could have been watching, but what does it matter? Um, Caster, I know, talks a big, big game, but there's no point to be like, oh, she's all talk, 
with Castor unless it's because Castor ran away, and that's what you're saying? That Castor just ran away? If she's unwounded, it is weird for Castor to run away. Maybe that's what he's saying by she's all talk. I didn't want to get out of the way, but I was just you do? You're talking about Ryder then. Huh. How do you know Ryder? You sound like you know her more than just I've been watching her. Unless you have been watching her a lot. I did not think she'd be able to win, but getting defeated with one blow? Man, show some spirit to at least kill your enemy as well. <laughs> I mean, it would be nice if uh, they took each other out, I suppose. But what's the point in that when they're the same person? Uh... <laughs> Of course! Uh, just like how you tried to kill me, so there could only be one Shiro Archer, Caster killed Ryder, and succeeded, so there's only one Caster Ryder. <laughs> he goes back to his usual manner and insults the now-gone Ryder. That suggests, like, you know Ryder to some extent. I don't know, maybe you're just angry at the fact that, um, Caster had her way so easily after your dealings with Caster? Hmm. Hmm. Archer, Ryder died protecting her master. You don't have any right to call her a fool. Okay, Saber is just being honorable, but I think she's wrong. The idea that Ryder died protecting her master, where does that even come from? Like, if Caster was just going for Ryder all along, there was no protecting. Caster just killed Ryder and that's all there was to it. We have no proof that if Castor had gone after Shinji instead, Shinji would be alive. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you have to say? A fool is a fool. If she's to call herself a hero, she should be ashamed that she could not even defeat a single enemy. If she can't do that, she should at least sacrifice her life to kill her enemy. The sacrifice your life thing you seem to be on. Huh. That shows some, you know, death seeker-ish qualities, but, uh, which plays into, oh, he's Shiro from the future path. But also, um, hmm. That plays into his, uh, we had a, just a dream flashback about him, or the idea that he already accomplished what he wanted to do and then maybe died doing it during his life or whatever, and so he just wanted to be let rest in peace. There's that idea too, and so there's that, yeah, it died doing the thing you want to do to Hero, and then there's some parallels to Saber in that case, which would make sense because Shiro and Arch and Saber are paralleled, but Shiro and Archer are also the same. Anyways, um... Because Saber wants to sacrifice herself to save her whole, like, uh, country or whatever. or And that's, um, uh, you know, bad and stuff. But now Archer's saying this, but I think he also doesn't necessarily like Saber's wish if he knows what it is, and I feel to an extent, at least subconsciously, he does. How convenient of you. She was defeated without doing anything because she was in a situation where she was not able to do so. Speaking ill of her defeat, are you really one to call yourself a hero? Ooh. Ooh, some moral conflict between Saber and Archer. I like it. It's fitting. It's fitting for them to butt heads. I mean, after all, Archer is a lot like Kiritsugu and they didn't act exactly get along. Huh. No matter the reason, it makes no difference to the fact that she was defeated badly. I mean, she was. I mean, I'm more mad at the lacking fallout after the fact. I mean, or rather, the immediately after was just fallout, I suppose. Well, <laughs> Well, it was certainly my mistake to say anything about a hero. The weak will die no matter what, disregarding the fact that they may be a hero or not. I mean, everyone will die, no matter how strong you are. 
you know, just gotta wait for old age. I feel like I've been in this place before. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Saber didn't talk much with Kiritsugu, though. She even said in Timeline 1, we only, he only spoke th to me three times to use the command spells. I mean, I think, uh, like, technically, when they first met, I don't know if they spoke, but um, Arch, uh, at the very least, Kiritsugu disregarded her. But However, Archer doesn't seem to, on face value, disregard females... In the same way that maybe Kiritsugu did um, with the sexism aspect. Um, now, he might still subconsciously think, Haha, women are nothing compared to me. But he at least doesn't say much about it out loud. If he does think that. Heroes not fit for this war should be eliminated early on. I suppose. <laughs> what the fuck? What just happened? No, stop it. Me and Rin have an alliance. Well said. Then will you fight me, Archer? Oh, you think Archer's unfit? <laughs> oh, down, Saber. Sa Saber, I thought you were trying to rein me in because me being angry about Archer. Don't let him push your buttons. He's very good at pushing buttons. Calm down. We have an alliance. <laughs> You? This is surprising. I don't know what got on your nerves. But you're challenging your ally to a fight? But unfortunately, I'm bound by the command spell to not fight against you two. To not fight against both of them? Not Yashiro? There's no loophole where you can attack Saber? I wonder the, what the exact spell was then. <laughs> uh, that's gonna get on her nerves. If you challenge me now, I'll only be defeated without resistance, just like Ryder. Is it your way of the night to fight such an opponent, Saber? <laughs> and he's enjoying getting on her nerves. Mmm. Indeed, Saber. Indeed. Hmm, <laughs> indeed. The two glare at each other without a word. Oh boy. The friction, the tension. They really didn't talk much in Timeline 1, from what we know. Archer was just biding his time because he was, like, injured the whole time. And then ultimately sacrificed himself against Berserker. He had a couple talks with Shiro, but that was about it. I guess he had already felt there was just no hope. And maybe just accepted and hoped that Saber would have a happy solution. I feel like, you know, something about Saber, given how um, he got freaked out at first. And then he also went out of his way to try to take Saber out in the Berserker fight, etc., etc. Stop right there, Archer. Tosaka's quiet voice puts a stop to it. <laughs> and he gets reined in by her. Uh, and she's the only one he can't really uh, object to because that command spell of, you know, obeying her orders and stuff. It always nags at him. This is no time to be fighting with Saber. <laughs> uh, reminds me a little, I guess, to an extent. Uh, there's a lot of differences, actually. But the Inuyasha Kagome, um... A relationship comes to mind with, uh, not quite, but like, you know, this guy would normally just be, you know, a sassy frassy with everyone, but as soon as Rin tries to butt in, he'd want to sass her, but he can't because of the command spell, and so he gets all like, ah. Anyways. There's no time to be fighting with Saber. Ryder's eliminated and a, ma and a master is gone now. He ran away. He's still out there somewhere. But I'm sure there's one more undefined master hiding at our school. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. It's a bit of a lame twist. Because there's no proof that Ryder's master is at our school. Ryder could have... Sorry. There's no proof Caster's master is at our school. Caster could have attacked just to kill Ryder. Which doesn't make sense and doesn't jive with Timeline 1, but they don't know that. 
so um i feel like there's no real proof that caster's master is at our school unless you want to get meta and um that's why it feels a bit weak narratively speaking to me but Ugh. yeah the, like this being our way of learning there's a fourth master of the school feels very weak but mm. Our cooperation continues until we defeat the master hiding at our school. Mmm, you're still refusing to accept a full commitment, huh, Rim? Or rather, maybe you've already internally accepted it, but you're just acting like you haven't as long as possible to, um, not accept that you've accepted it. Our cooperation continues until we defeat the master hiding at our school, or what? Do you want me to use another command spell to order you not to fight Saber? <laughs> if you do that, he just leaves! So, <laughs> You're right. Saber was so adherent to her principles that I got too caught up making fun of her. <laughs> yeah, at least he admits that's what he was doing. I'm sorry, Saber. Please fight me after our cooperation is over. <laughs> so there's Saber just trying to um, reign her own nobleness. Where Archer, I feel, is more doing this for uh, Rin's sake. But it ultimately amounts to, um, you know. Just a bunch of apologies. What a happy, healthy way to end an argument. Neither side being necessarily bitter. On the outside. It seems I was acting too immature. I'll ignore your comment in, de in deference to Rin. Saber takes a step back while uh, glaring at Archer and stands by my side. She's still glaring at him. Never mind. There's still internal, uh, internal squ squamishing. Archer is the most interesting part of the timeline so far. Oh, for sure. But, um... <clears throat> I can't get over that. That feels like a very lame way to reveal that Caster's master is at the school. Whatever. Saber takes a step back while glaring at Archer and stands by my side. Telesaka moves Archer back as well. Well, <laughs> Well, that's about it. We're still cooperating. It's impossible to do so today, but we can search for Caster's Master at school tomorrow. Right. I mean, that sounds interesting. That sounds interesting. Yeah. But there definitely would have been better ways to reveal this to us. I don't even feel like they fully reveal this to us. I only honestly believe it because I've seen Timeline 1 and I'm being meta. Otherwise, I'd be like, how do you know that? But, <clears throat> and honestly, how do you know that? I feel like she's just guessing, but I know she's right. Uh, this is more the Archer route, <laughs> not the supposed Rin route. <laughs> I mean, I suppose. However, you know, visual novel, females, banging the women. We're gonna bang the Rin. We're definitely getting closer to Rin with the Rin sexualness, even if that does, you know, by proxy also give a bunch of Archer development, which I think is fine. <clears throat> we can search for Caster's Master at school tomorrow. We'll just be maintaining the present state, but is that alright with you? The present state? What do you mean present state? What does that mean? What are you talking about? Ah. So what will you do now? Are you going to go to the Rito Temple? That would be to check if Caster is still there or not, I suppose. That would be risky to do it without us. そんなわけないでしょう。アーチャーの話じゃ、流道寺に行くのは自殺行為だって話だし、キャスターを倒すんならマスターを探すのが先決よ。of course not. According to Archer, going to the Rita Temple is suicidal. If we want to defeat Castro, we'll have to search for our master first. 
feels weird that Caster's Master wouldn't just be at the temple if it's such a protected place. I suppose leaving them away from Caster and in a safe place isn't a bad idea if, like, they're afraid of Caster getting attacked because they are leaving an obvious thing, but leaving it in the, leaving their master just in the school with a bunch of other masters running around seems shaky. I suppose she thinks that she always has some plan to deal with them, like how this time she dealt with Ryder, but especially... <sighs> Especially after finding out how, you know, troublesome Archer could be. I guess it's too problematic to attempt to move her master now that the war has started, as it might let on that something is afoot. Hmm. I guess. Man, four masters at the school. What a coincidence. We'll have to search for her master first. Fortunately or not, Caster's master is coming to school every day. We should let them be and keep them off guard. You are making big guesses, Ren. There's no reason to think that Caster's master is coming to school every day. I still feel like you're reaching with the idea that, that Caster's master is even at the school, and that you didn't do that just as an easy way to um, mark Ryder. But, mm. Eh? I try to think how she came to that conclusion. Oh, thank you, Shiro! Yes, I'm not crazy! I'm not crazy. I try to think how she came to that conclusion. Tosaka knew that there's a master at her school. How did she know that? The master could have just been Shinji. She's saying that she was sensing another presence, I guess? I guess. She never said that to us in the other timeline. I guess because she was being more secretive because she didn't necessarily like, like me as much and didn't... And she likes to do things herself. But then, if she likes to do things herself, well, what about when Archer got taken out? Because after Archer got taken out in Timeline 1, Caster was still running around, and in theory, Rin should have sensed the Master at the school, but she still never said anything to us. So, I don't know what that means. But, like, it feels like Rin was being very... Keeping a lot of things to the chest in that timeline. Not fully opening up to us. Because she felt weird about the whole thing because of our connection in the past. She was already calling me Shiro. But she wasn't helping me win the war because maybe she internally was still trying to f think that maybe she could get with me. And didn't know to, I don't know, she tried to still deal with things like that herself. But then we just end up beating Caster. I guess she, Ren wouldn't have known the master at the school was Caster's master. But she could have process of elimination it. Like, after we get Shinji and Ilya... And Shiro, Shinji, Ilya, Shiro, Rin, um, Kirei. Okay, I suppose technically Assassin's a master. We don't necessarily look. Rin wouldn't know that Caster is Assassin's master. So I suppose she wouldn't necessarily know. But if, like, let's say it was just Lancer left, theoretically. Well, I guess Gilly's running around. Um, couldn't Rin be like, oh, there should be another master at the school. If there isn't, what the fuck happened? We know Rin was doing something in the back, so maybe she was investigating Caster's master. Clearly, it never went anywhere, or if it did, she never told us. And if she never told us, why was she not... Mm, it just feels weird. I just have so many questions, I don't know if they'll ever get answered. Um, If they get answered somehow, cool. But if they don't, I just feel like, well, that feels like bad writing. I don't know. There's another master at the school, and Rin knows about them. In theory, she should have known about them in the other timeline. Why did she never say anything to us? I don't know. Tozaka knew, knew that there's a master at her school. That must be because there's someone there with magical energy other than Shinji, apparently. Since Caster appeared, it must mean the master at her school is Caster's master. I guess that's a fair conclusion. Additionally, Caster's master is coming to school every day for some reason. You don't know that. That's a guess. It means he or she is coming to school every day defenselessly rather than staying through the temple under Caster's protection. That is weird, which is why the assumption that Caster's master is coming to school every day is a guess, unless we're saying that Rin is sensing it every day. Okay, fair. Rin is sensing it every day. So that's how Rin knows that it's Caster's master. That feels like an obvious trap, right? I mean, if Caster has any suspicion that... Um, 
there's other masters there and that they might sense that her master's there I feel like Caster would want to protect against that in some way unless her master was just being used as a trap because I know Caster wouldn't necessarily care much about her master but maybe that's all her master is a trap Assumedly, Caster killed her own master off screen last time. We never saw Ayako again. Did she fucking kill Ayako? We never saw, I don't know, maybe we didn't see Kazuki again either. I think they're both fair candidates. Did we see I Wait, no. I think we saw Ayako at the end. Wait, wait. Did we see Ayako at the end in Timeline 1? No, did we never get to school? Because I feel like we were going to see her. We were all going to have... We were going to the archery club at the end of timeline one, but I don't think we ever got there, so maybe we never saw Aiko, so maybe Aiko did die off screen? Maybe. Hmm. <sighs> hmm. Means she's coming to school every day defenselessly rather than staying through the temple under Caster's protection. I don't remember. Don't tell me. I don't remember. I want to keep thinking it could be Aiko. Because if it's not Echo, I feel like it's just Kazuki. And then maybe that's wrong and it's Issei, but I don't think it's Issei. I guess Issei could be magically controlled. I, f I was going to say there's no way it's Issei because I don't think he's being malicious. But he might not be malicious if he's being magically controlled. I guess that's possible. Because he is from the Yuri Temple. I just feel like he has enough of a role in the narrative that I'm not questioning the idea that he's not the master. He could still be the master. But I feel like he has enough of a role in the narrative that I wouldn't be like, Well, what is he if he's not the master? Whereas with Aiko, I feel like she's just not showing up enough, and Kazuki is literally nothing, so... Yeah. It means he or she is staying at the school every day defenselessly rather than staying at the Rito Temple under Caster's protection. So you're going to figure out who the master is and attack the master before they get back to the Rito Temple? Maybe since Caster's master is not really necessary... Um, due to her mana source, she's using them in what way she... Oh, yeah, a trap. That's what I was saying. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, sure, that's a fine assumption, but... It's a fine assumption. I feel like there's a button there somewhere, but I forget what I was going to say with the butt. So, butts. You're going to figure out who the master is and attack the master before they get back to the Yura temple? So you the... Yep, it seems like Caster's master doesn't know that, that we're masters. Uh, well, no, Caster... Wait, Caster's master... Caster definitely knows that we're masters. If Caster's master doesn't know, then Caster's master is probably just a trap. If they knew, they wouldn't come to school, right? Well, Caster knows I'm a master. So, if Caster knows that her master is going to the school, and knows that I'm going to the school, and she's just okay with it, it's a trap. Like, even if Caster's master doesn't know, Caster knows, so it's a trap. Like, 100%. I feel like there's no debate here. Oh, yeah, that's true. Then Caster's master didn't know that Shinji was a master either? Uh, does it matter? Caster knows that Shiro is a master. So, I feel like just Caster knows. It's a trap. I don't think there's any other way to think about this. So the master is a trap. There we go. That's all there is to it. I can't come up with an explanation, but that's likely. Such a stupid thing shouldn't be possible considering how good the servant is at magic. Yeah. I mean, I feel like Caster knew all along. Assuming that their master is there, they might have been using them as a sensing point, and they would have known who Shiro, they would have known about Ren, um, they know about Shinji. Um, they probably know to some extent about Ilya, especially given that Ilya is not even very secretive about herself. Um... Uh, she obviously knows about herself. She's the fifth master. <laughs> um, and then, uh, who does that leave? That leaves two? Am I crazy? Shiro, Shinji, Rin. Her own master, herself, Ilya. That leaves one. Kirei. Kirei's the one that she may or may not know about. If she knows about Kirei, she didn't know about Gilgamesh. But So I don't know if she knew about Kirei. But she probably at least knew about everyone else. Such a stupid thing shouldn't be possible considering how good the servant is at magi magic. Yeah. 
Even I, who has no knowledge as a master, I got this far thanks to Saber. If you have a servant like Castor, I'm sure you wouldn't do something as dangerous as going outside. So they're a trap. Ooh, that's wrong. Your premises are wrong, Rin. Ooh, in what way? Archer? Archer? Ah, it comes up. Yeah, I don't think it matters if the master has a free will in this case, though. Caster knows, so either they're a trap, or they know, and they're intentionally acting as bait. Either way, it's a trap. I don't think Caster's master has a free will. Yeah. No, I believe the master thinks he has a free will, he or she. Uh, he or she has a free will when, in fact, he's controlled by a mass by caster. That woman is not someone who would be under someone. She would first control her master to do whatever she wishes. So... In that case, if her master was just a ploy... Okay, so a couple thoughts have come into my head recently as um, things have come up. Like, for the example of Caster being Assassin's uh, master, the reason Assassin died off screen, it could have been because Caster was just done with him, or it could have been because we saw the idea that Assassin doesn't really like Caster um, because he was like, oh, I let Archer you through on purpose so you could deal with Caster. Um, he implied that. So, maybe Assassin took some opportunity to try to attack Caster. And it failed horribly and Caster just killed Assassin. Uh, that, or, or Caster just got rid of him. But there's another idea in there. Assuming Caster's master died off screen, maybe Assassin was snooping on Caster in some way to uh, backstab her all along. Um, and found out about her master situation. Maybe tried to get some kind of deal going with them. But then Caster found out about it and killed both of them. I think that's possible. Because Caster's master dying off screen to me seems like... Um, like Caster killing her own master. Um, uh, sorry, Caster killing Assassin, her servant, makes a lot of sense. Because Assassin is dangerous if she doesn't necessarily need him anymore. Um, but Caster killing her master doesn't really do much unless she's just, FOR EVIL'S SAKE! There's not really a reason to necessarily kill her master. So, unless maybe Assassin was trying to create some kind of truce or some other master or servant got close to them. Um, maybe Makiri found something out. Because, like, Shinji, uh, at least Shinji as Shinji with Ryder, never got anywhere. Ilya Berserker don't seem to have gotten anywhere there. As far as we know, Rin or Shiro didn't really get... Maybe Rin got close, but if Rin got close, um, I think Caster would have just used that to kill Rin in some way. Uh, so, I don't know. That says to me that maybe Assassin made some kind of move, some kind of try to alliance with whoever Caster's master was, and Caster killed them both, I think is my ongoing theory. That would explain why Caster had to kill her own master, because otherwise, why not just leave them up as a trap? Why, why kill them? Um, maybe it takes energy to control them magically, but is it not still worth it? I don't know. Mm, there's still a decent number of masters running around in Timeline 1, even if most of the servants were gone. So, I feel like there's still merit to that trap. She would first control her master to do whatever she wishes. <clears throat> Are you saying Caster's master is just a puppet? Yeah, she implied as much already. Or rather, I mean, I don't know if she implied as much, but Archer... I don't remember if she implied before or after, but Archer at some point assumed as much and Caster didn't exactly deny it. Either by trickery or removing the memory of being a master? Something like that sounds about right. Hmm, I see. It's interesting to think that the Master is not conscious of the state he or she is in. At the very least, Sakura shouldn't be Caster's Master. 
because Caster, if she's telling the truth, killed her master. And we did see Sakura, for sure I remember this, we did see Sakura after the fact because I was like, so are you gonna mourn your brother? And they talked about how Ilya was, was bonding with Sakura, which is funny because Ilya killed Shinji. But anyways, um, so that theoretically can't be the case unless, you know, someone somewhere is lying to us. But it's interesting to think that the master is not um, conscious of the state he or she is in. Originally, a servant cannot do something to its master. Hmm. The servant cannot exist if it kills its master. Well, apparently Ryder killed their... Uh, nope, nope. <laughs> I'm just convinced they're the same person already. Caster killed their master already at the end of Timeline 1, according to them, so they've got some malarkey going on. In contrast, the master has the command spell. If the servant disobeys, the master can even kill the servant. Oh, you can uh, use a command spell to have your servant co commit seppuku? Commit sudoku? That's a useful uh, thing to know. That being the case, it is safer to trick your master than to kill them. Indeed. That does beg the question, though, of how... We check status and stuff for a second. Um, caster. Uh, creates the use and advantage. Temple allows creation. We don't really know. We know high speed, but we don't really know um, skills or anything. Rider, we still don't have details. or We don't have... Oh, we have her uh, other ceiling, but we don't get the uh, unicorn in this one. I'll bury your blood. It melts the people within it. The melted people become red blood. And are absorbed by the user of the barrier, primarily used to absorb magical energy, blah, blah, blah. Um, we don't have, um, what was I saying? Right, Caster. Um, we don't really have a skill for her. Like, Gilgamesh has a skill that's just, like, can act without a master. Um, if we go to Archer for a second. Independent Action B. He also has this to an extent. Um, it seems to be an Archer thing. Ability that allows independent movement even after the master's magical energy supply is cut off. With rank B, it's possible for a servant to stay in this world for two days after losing its master. Uh, now, is this just a... I'm wondering if Archer having independent action is just foreshadowing for Gilgamesh and how he works. Or if this means Rin's gonna, like, die or something. I, it's weird, though. I feel like if Rin was gonna die, timeline 1 was the timeline for her to die. And then have Archer stay alive for a while. If Timeline 2 is the Rin timeline, her dying would be very dark. Uh, however, it would further the idea of never having a happy ending with any of the females. And if she dies in Timeline 3, that's pretty sad because that's the last timeline. But uh, um, just something to think of. It could just be lore. The ability, this ability could just be lore. But um, it, what, what's important is that he has this ability, but someone like Caster doesn't seem to have this ability, so I feel like they would need to build up a decent amount of magic and then act on it in some way um, to do something without a master, unless they swap masters. Maybe she has a master swap to, like, Makiri or something, if that's even possible. But Makiri's already out of the war. I don't I mean, he's not in the war, technically. So, I don't know if you can make someone who's not in the war part of the war. I don't think so. I think you need a servant who's part of the war, and I think all of them are accounted for in theory. But she's her own master, so can she use herself? I don't know if it works that way. Unless Timeline 3 Shiro just commands spells Saber to kill Rin. I don't think so. I really don't think... Like, they, like Timeline 3 Shiro might command spell um, Saber to kill Archer. I could see that maybe happening. But I do not see that her, him doing that to kill Rin. Especially after Timeline 2, they theoretically are going to get really close. For Timeline 3 to him be like, oh yeah, let's kill Rin. That seems like a dark progression. Like, Shiro got better after Timeline 1. Timeline 1 was him, you know, he got over him being kind of dark. He's being less dark. In theory, he's going in a better direction. If he kills Rin, that's going way dark. Unless the plot twist is that Rin is evil in this timeline. But that would be a big fucking plot twist. Um, that would certainly come out of nowhere in my opinion. Anyways, uh, and also we've seen her inner monologues. That seems very hard to believe. With that being the case, it's safer to trick your master than to kill him. Tosaka ponders. Mm. Ah. But I'm not convinced. Oh? 
それをマスターに隠しているなんてできるのか。Really? That's doing a lot of evil deeds, right? Can she actually hide it from her master? Can she actually hide it all from her master? サーバントが強ければ強いほど、マスターだって警戒心を持つんじゃないか ?Wouldn't the master be more on guard the stronger his servant is? They're all calling him. Hmm. They're all calling him a he. Now, I don't know if the actual Japanese is doing this too, just assuming it's a he. Now, that could be that the plot twist is you called it a he, but it's a she. But it could also just be, I guess that's why it doesn't matter. It could also just be that it is a he, in which case it's probably Kazuki. I guess it could be Issei, though.、Uh, but、um, I'm just noticing they keep calling, them, calling the unknown master a he. I don't know what the wording being used in Japanese is, but.、Mm. Wouldn't the master be more on guard the stronger his servant is? その点は問題ない。絵に描いたようなお人しがマスターであるなら、都合のいい言い訳などいくらでもできる。キャスターのマスターも、そういう善人なのかもしれんぞ。That is not a problem. She can make convenient excuses if her master is disgustingly good natured. Caster's master、uh, may be such a person as well. Ah. I see. If you think that the master is just really good natured, Castor could lie to them about what's really going on. About all the evil deeds she's doing? Hmm. Japanese doesn't generally have this. Um, hmm. He is a default pronoun. Ah,、uh, some people. Oh, in 2004 English? Some people will take offense to that notion that he is a、uh, default pronoun. Because you can just as easily say they or their. You don't have to say he. Now, I suppose Archer. I don't know, because they're all doing it. They're all calling him a he.、Um, I don't know. I guess you're right that we do just naturally go to he before she. If we don't know, we assume he. But pe some people take issue with that. I even take slight issue with that. But、um, I get the idea that it's a default pronoun, but I do think the fact that that is in our subconscious, it's a default pronoun. Is a problem. I don't take as much issue with it as I know others do, but I do think it's a problem. It's not a problem. She can make convenient excuses if her master is disgustingly good natured. Caster's master may be such a person as well. 2004 isn't, you know, that long ago. I mean, I know, like, there's a big difference between then and now, but it's not as big of a difference as it could be if we went back further. Like, if this was 90s or 80s, I'd be like, okay, yeah. But we're already getting into the 2000s. I'm already starting to be a little bit like, hmm. Does it make sense to translate it that way? Hmm. Anyways,、uh, she can make convenient excuses. Maybe such a person as well. Okay, this is very interesting to me. That almost implies like the master would be someone like Sakura, someone good natured. But I'm like, that shouldn't be the case. That shouldn't be possible. Um, my two main guesses are that it's Kuzuki and Ayako. And the problem is that Kuzuki seems like a bit of a dick. Not a dick, but like he's stern. So I don't think he's like, a, you know, like a goody two shoe, wouldn't pay attention type of person. And then Ayako, we know she's sharp. So I think this assumption is just wrong. Because otherwise, even Issei doesn't seem that goody two. It seems like. It would just be Sakura based on who we know, but I don't think, even though I do think Sakura's got a plot twist, I don't think that's the plot twist, unless, again, there's some lie going on here. Because if Castor killed their master, then either Sakura did like some kind of switchy witchy, or she faked her death, or something, which is possible. Maybe she faked her death. Maybe she is Castor's master. But, or Castor lied, but why would she lie?、Uh. <clears throat> Castor's master may be such a person as well. <laughs> My family sucks, so I have a cute MILF servant.、Uh, yeah. I, mean, can't, I mean, yeah, but her, her servant sucks too in that case. <laughs> Why did you look at me when you said that? <laughs> fair. <laughs> I don't think he's as bad as he was in、uh, Timeline 1 about that kind of thing, but fair. What? <laughs> キャスターのマスターが間の抜けた人間という可能性とって。Well, it's because we have a good example here. I'm not stupid. <laughs> I'd argue that she was smarter than、uh, Ren in this timeline. 
The possibility that Caster's Master is stupid is not zero. Fair. I won't agree with you. I will. I, I won't disagree with you. <laughs> uh, I agree that it's not zero, but I don't think it's likely given my meta knowledge. From your perspective, it could be literally anyone in the school. From my perspective, clearly it's going to be a plot twist and it's going to be revealed to someone we already know. So I think it is pretty close to zero because I feel like the only real possibility is Sakura and I do not think that's the case. If Kazuki was the master, I assume he would have to be mind-controlled. Doesn't seem 100% evil. And stern enough to not be socially manipulated. Yeah, I think it's mind-controlled either way. Because I think Kazuki or Ayako, don't, or Issei, don't seem like um, they would necessarily take shit from them. Maybe Issei. Issei's the one who might take the shit the most. But I don't think he'd take it gullibly. I think he'd um, take it because he's horny for her. Uh... But, um, I feel like it would just be Sakura, but Sakura is the only one who for sure doesn't seem to work. I don't know. Um, which is why, in-universe, I get him saying this. Out of universe, I am taking a stern stance and being like, I disagree, good sir. I see. You do have a good, you do have a point, Archer. Hey. Why are you agreeing, Saber? <laughs> uh... Okay, Alright, I get it. No matter what kind of person Caster's Master may be, it's likely that they'll be at school tomorrow. So you can generally sense them in school, but you can't exactly sense them? Because my main theories are it's Ayako or Kazuki, but Ayako is her friend. Kazuki is, I think, her main homeroom teacher, right? Because I think Taiga is Shiro's main homeroom, but I think Kazuki is Rin's main homeroom. I may be wrong about that, but I feel like that's true. And if it's Issei, Rin's been around Issei enough, too, so clearly that she can't exactly sense them because I feel pretty confident it's one of those three. I mean, I don't think it's Sakura either, but if that was true, Rin would sense them as well, but, you know. <laughs> We'll continue to investigate the school, and we'll attack Caster's master, assuming we find him or her. That seems like a bad idea. That's a trap. That's 100% a trap. And I mean, especially if they're doing it against their will, you want to attack them? I mean, I agree we should maybe look into it, but I feel we should go into this with the idea that, oh, this is probably a trap. I feel 100% like that should be the mindset going into this. <sighs> I do not think that's the appropriate course of action. I think that's the appropriate course of action, but how will we work look for the master? That'll be today's homework. We'll each go home and think about it. Oh boy, I hate homework. YouTube. You two are tired anyway, right? I don't want to push you two and have you collapse. Let's call it a day. Sure, I agree. This seems like a great point for an intermission. Caster Master Search! It's 100% a trap, though. Kind of makes sense why she can sense the magic, uh, the Master, if they are a trap. Caster probably is layering a lot of spells on them. Uh, oh, yeah. Sure, it makes sense. I mean, she already knows who Shinji is, so Shiro is, so I feel like that's a clear indication that this is a trap. 100% they should be assuming as much, I feel. Um, but, uh, even despite that, I feel Caster's so good at sensing magic, you should assume as much anyways. But, anyways, Caster's Master Search. It's 100% a trap, though. So, uh, I'll take our one intermission of the stream. Okay, if you're going to show me this Wakame thing or whatever it is, then what is it? Show me. Or, I guess, if that's what you want to do. <clears throat> but anyways, let me read these. No matter what, they don't really have an option. They either attack Caster in her temple, which Archer claims is suicide. So this is the only other option. And they have to do this as quick as possible as Caster gains more power. That's why it's such a good trap. The longer she's in the war... Hiro Shiro would want to stop the coma incidents as quick as possible as well, I suppose. Even if it is a trap, they'll have to spring it. 
I feel, I do think they should look into what's going on with the master, but they should go into it with the idea that it's a trap. And I don't think either of them said, it's probably a trap. Um. Wait, what? Wait, I thought you were telling me something about outside the game. Wait, what is this? Oh. Go to main men in the game? Okay, I guess I'll do it because you've already talked, told me about the... Uh, I guess there was something I was never going to discover then. Um, normally, I'd like to wait <clears throat> and do something like this in extras after the fact, but I guess you've already told me about it at this point. All right, so go to... How do I do this? Um, config, history, return top. This should return to the title screen. Okay, wait, hold on, just to make sure. I definitely made the save point. Yes, I did. All right, go to top, or go return top. Go to main menu, go to extra, and click empty space above the buttons. These buttons? Yes, hidden button is right here. Oh, the fuck? Hopefully this doesn't glitch me. All these except for gallery seem to work fine. But, okay, hidden button. What the fuck? Is it okay for me to watch this? Wise hasn't objected, so I guess it's okay? Yay, I'll cooperate. Oh, this seems like a big thing. Is this a small thing or a big thing? If it's a big thing, I want to do this later. I'd rather... Hmm, if this is a big thing, I don't know if I want to do this right now. How big is this? Is this a small thing or a big thing? It's fine for me to watch this? Okay. How long is this? Is it short? Um, can I like make a save? Uh, oh, you can save. It's a stupid thing. Oh, okay. Let's make a save. I'm kind of curious what it says. Stupid thing? Stupid thing. Title. Oh, <laughs> what the heck? Taitoru. <laughs> the title is Taitoru in Katakana. <laughs> Taitoru. That's funny. It's a joke. I don't really find it funny, but viewers love it. So shrugs. Okay. Well, let's see what this is. Um, okay. I guess we'll just do it now. We're already doing it. So I guess we'll do it. Yay, I'll cooperate. Really? Okay, Shinji. So, yeah, this looked like Mato's house. Of course. Wait, what? Betraying Tosaka and selling her out. Betrayed by Sakura and getting sold out. The Bakanichans are now born. Betraying Tosaka and selling her out. Betrayed by Sakura and getting sold out. I don't get it. Who are we? Am I Shiro? You're saying you want to get betrayed by Sakura. Okay. Baka Nichans. I don't get your high tension, but does that mean I can trust you? What a weird... Oh, it's relevant to Shinji, so I guess it's kind of relevant. What a weird thing, Majigger. But trade by okay. Yeah, but I'll betray you in the end. That then you can't trust me. It wasn't properly translated. Okay. So the twenty million powers route with Shin Chan starts here. 
20 million powers? Huh? Shin-chan, am I Shiro? It would if we had the time. Eject! Okay. Ilya wants us to all die. Sounds about right. Optimus Prime will appear too? Give context. This is um, Fate Route where Shinji makes the deal with Shiro. Yeah, that's more or less what I assumed. But, like, the wording is really weird. Dead end. Okay. I wonder if that counts as an actual tu- wait, if I go to extra, it's still a hidden button. I don't want to check my ED list. Well, actually, that's the only one. I haven't gotten any other bad ends, that's right, since the one I got. So let's check. ED list. Um. No, it doesn't seem to be counted, right? Because, um... Because we got, like, the things. We got 16, which was the second bad end of the Rin route. And I don't think we've gotten any Wakam Wakame or whatever. It's a joke, Shinji wrote. I already said this wasn't funny, but viewers love it. Yeah. I don't really get it. Maybe if I did it separately as its own thing instead of in the middle of other things, I could appreciate it more. I think I get the joke, maybe, but they could have made it funnier, for sure. I don't necessarily find it that funny. Wait, what do you mean? There's also supposed to be a new route screen, Wakame Paradise. Well, how would I get that route screen? I don't understand what that even means. Um, okay. The, to me, the funniest part was the fact that its title is title in Katakana. But otherwise... Okay. That was a scene that existed. Weird. I feel like... I under It's like one of those things where I think I get the joke, but I don't necessarily find it something to laugh at. I feel like it could have been executed more properly. I understand the idea of the joke. I see a universe where I find that funny. But in this case, I don't really find it funny. Anyways, back to UBW. <sighs> <clears throat> well, I think that's the appropriate course of action, but how will we look for the master? Now you know why I didn't object because it was so nothing. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Um, how will we look for the master? The case homework, we'll each go home and think about it. You two are tired anyway, right? I don't want to push you two and have you collapse. Let's call it a day. That, no, I'm not that tired. <laughs> he did exert a lot of energy, like, uh, killing those scullies, so she probably wants to be considerate, but uh, he's got a lot of energy. I don't know if I fully know what you're talking about, Tapoima. That might be in a different version of the game. Because I don't really change routes the way that you're talking about, to my knowledge. I know this game has had a few different versions of release. But, um, you're saying, oh, you know how when you change a route? No, I don't know. And I don't know if I want you to explain that to me. But I don't know what that means. Anyways, um, oh, I'm aware of the Unlimited Blade Works title in the main menu, but there's no way for me to, like, change that in, like, unless you're saying there's some Easter egg where that changes to Wakame Paradise, but, like, there's no way for me to change that from this, anyways, I, um, this executable, to my knowledge, unless, hold on, let me, let, let me check something. I know if, if. There's only one way I can think that, um, to change this. Let me see. I don't see it. Nope. 
Okay, I just checked the thing that I would normally use to change my route. Uh, it's not there. So, yeah. <clears throat> I don't know what you mean. I'm not that tired. I'm just going to focus on this. It's still early, so... Hey, Tosaka! Wait, what? What's she doing? Huh? What's happening? いいから言う通りにしなさい。どのみち今日は学校に入れないし、手がかりもゼロでしょ。ここにいても仕方がないし、何よりアーチャーの様子が変だって気づいてないの？ Oh, oh, shoot! <laughs> this was a sudden. Just do as I say. We can't go into school today, and we don't have a clue right now. It's meaningless to stay here, and most of all, don't you realize Archer's acting strange? Is he? I mean. Is he? Did you? Ooh, you caught something. You're good at reading your uh, servant then. No, I have not noticed him acting strange at all. Not compared to, to my understanding of him normally, but I guess you would know him better than I would. What are you talking about? Oh, that's what you mean, that he does feel sorry about attacking Shiro the other day. I mean, I already assumed as much, but I mean... I don't necessarily find that weird, to be honest. I, I thought that was natural. But maybe I'm just so smart. <clears throat> Things won't settle down if he stays with you, considering it only happened yesterday. If that's what you mean by him acting weird, then I assumed he'd be weird. <laughs> Fine, I'll go home, I'll go home, so... Don't whisper to me from such a close range. <laughs> wow, ooh, makes him, uh, tingles his Rin sexualness. He's thinking about the Rin sexual. Rin's thinking about Archer, so she's able to get close to him without actually thinking. Until now, when he starts, you know, he says yes, she's gonna realize, oh shit, we're close, and then gonna get all, um, sexual herself for a second. And then be like, ah, well, never mind. If you understand, it's good. Oh, okay. She doesn't. Then I'll see you tomorrow. I don't think it'll happen again, but be careful during the night. I won't forgive you if Caster gets control of you again. Well, I can't help fucking help it. <laughs> uh, you still don't feel comfortable for us to stay in the same house? Mm. Alright, alright, I'll go home. Mm, now he's getting frazzled by the sexualness, and she's focused on Archer acting weird and caring for his, uh, ooh, shows how much she cares about uh, him as a servant. Mm, she cares more than just uh, the fact that you're wishing that she had Saber. Daw, it's cute. Aww. I guess she has to throw that in. Hmm, and uh, thanks for your work today. You're acting just a bit like a master now, just a bit. <laughs> oh, you love me. That was like a jumps away from me. Oh, of course. Let's go, Archer. I'm going to seriously inquire about your carelessness after we get home. Classic Sundari deflecting. <laughs> oh, as I thought. I was thinking how un unabusive you were. <laughs> hey now, do I really have to settle things with you once and for all? Daw, how cute. If Archer's future best hero would be weird if his, uh, waifu was Rin. Well, I mean... Not really. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, at least, it's weird only if Archer knows. But if Archer still doesn't have his full memory back, I don't think it's that weird. Archer and Tosaka leave, arguing. Just like a sun couple. Right? Right? <laughs> We should go home too. I'm a bit tired, so let's have dinner early tonight. <laughs> I support food. 
<laughs> I support food that isn't from Taiga. That sounds good. I support that idea, Shiro. We leave the wood quietly so we won't be seen by anyone. Oh, uh, quick check, quick check. Did uh, Rin let the Shiro name slip? Because I just noticed because Saber had called us Shiro. Uh, did Rin ever let the Shiro name slip or just said Emiya towards the end? Thank you for your work today. She didn't at least say Shiro in the text, I don't think. No, I think here she's just saying Emiya, if anything. Okay, I don't think she let the Shiro name slip. All right. We leave the woods quietly so we won't be seen by anyone. Yeah. I'll pull myself together, go shopping in the shopping district, make a big dinner, and take a rest. You're gonna go shopping in the shopping district? Even though there's masters running about? Well, I guess to be fair, from your pers if you subconsciously know things from Thailand 1, you would know you don't really have anything to worry about except for maybe Elia. And you subconsciously know that Elia is a cool bro and you don't have to worry about her, I suppose. Otherwise, there's Kira, but you don't have to worry about Kira. Um, I mean, you have to worry about Kira, but not him being in the shopping district. So I suppose, and if you know all the other masters are at school, four of them are at school, um, one of them is Caster, one of them is Elia, one of them is Kira, so in theory, you're subconsciously you could know, but if you don't subconsciously know, then going out to just, unless you're going with Saber, then it's fine. Hmm. We'll talk about Caster and her master after that. If you're going together, it's fine. I just, my mind automatically assumes he's going everywhere alone because of, you know, his stupidity in Thailand 1, but we'll talk about uh, Caster and her master after that. Okay. Toshaka calls me after dinner. Ah, uh, she's feeling, uh, she's already feeling antsy about it. I guess there wasn't as much damage as we thought there would be at school. It must be because the one who set up the boundary field rider died quickly. So what happened to Shinji? I feel like that's important, otherwise they would have just killed him off along with Ryder. I hear the students that were in the same classroom as Ryder need to stay in the hospital for a long time. Most students just have anemia. School's not going to close down, and we'll be having classes like normal tomorrow. That, uh, brick fast pace? <laughs> oh, Rin's pace, you mean? Mm. Shiro. Shiro, what did Rin say? She said school's going on as normal, so we'll go to school tomorrow and look for Caster's master. I see, so nothing, n nobody in that building suffered seriously? Except for a few. Oh, I think Fujine is not home because she's busy with a SNAF meeting or something, so she was not one of the few. Uh, on the other timeline, she was injured pretty bad, but uh, staff meeting. Maybe they're talking about what actually happened, possibly, or they're trying to decide how to proceed with protections because they can't just let it go as if nothing happened unless there was a mass memory wipe. That is good. Knowing Taiga, I'm sure she'd be sitting at the breakfast table tomorrow like nothing had happened. Go moves are playing out in my mind. I don't know why. But it's just like, oh, if they attack there, I block there. If I don't know. Maybe it's because I have the war of the Grail War on the mind that I'm thinking about, oh, how would I do my mini go war? <laughs> For some reason, moves are just playing out in my mind. It's the fighting. It's the fighting of the Grail War. It's the fact that we got chipped. I was expecting more of a climactic fight, and we didn't get one, so my mind is playing out a climactic go fight. That's what it is. Uh. I'm sure she'd be sitting at the breakfast table tomorrow like nothing had happened. Yeah, that's a relief for me as well. Well, since her energy is extraordinary, I stopped worrying about her when I heard everyone's all right. Deva, Shiro. Then, Shiro, now it's time for me to get close. Continuing that conversation from earlier. Uh, which one? She leans over the table with a serious face. So you haven't given up yet? <clears throat> given up on what exactly? What are we giving up on? Of course. 
That's very fair. She should have been sleeping in my room from the first place. I suppose the idea before was that Taiga and Sakura, you know, Taiga was there. was like, no, no, no. But after like one night or two nights, it should be more comfortable, especially because Taiga's not even here. Sakura's not here either. There's no reason for Saber to not sleep in my room except for hormones. But sure, you already have a hard on for Rin, so get over and let her sleep in your room. <laughs> I will sleep in your room so we don't repeat, have, repeat last night's mistake. There's nothing for you to complain about, right? Dash, 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 dash. Just let it happen, Shiro. You already have a hard on for Rin. Just let it happen. I do have complaints. Having Saber sleep in the same room as me is like telling me to die. That is not the same thing, Shiro. You've had death wishes before. You had a death wish clearly in timeline one. So I don't feel like that's something you should be joking about. <laughs> Maybe it's because um, you knew that in timeline one, you getting so close to her was unhealthy. So her getting close to you and even tempting you to get that close again subconsciously, you're like, I don't want to die. I don't want to go back to that mental unhealthiness. But otherwise, that's some weird wording. That's some serious wording. Shiro, Shiro, first of all, it is your fault for being affected by such a long-range hypnotism. I cannot protect you from Caster's magic, so it's natural for me to at least stay in the same room. I 100% agree. There's no real good objection to this. Magic can be better sense the closer I am to it. If casters to go after you, I must sleep close to you. Well, that's a very sound argument, Saber, but... I think that caster won't use the same strategy since she failed once. Sure, you're not wrong, but why take the risk? If you're vulnerable again... I guess, granted, Archer, you know, next time might not give mercy. That's a fair counter-argument, but counter-counter-argument, what if someone that isn't Caster attacks us? What if Lancer attacks us? What if uh, uh, Berserker attacks us? What if anyone, you know, relevant attacks us, even if it's not Caster? I think so, but if I say that to Saber right now... Am I? シラタマミツチョコまんじゅうなみにあまいそのような考えだからこそキャスターなどという土下座に田村かされたあげくアーチャーのような少年のねじる曲がったやろうに罵倒されるのですナイスシュラハビングイズフューチャービジョンユー
I don't think she need to budge on this, to be honest. But, um, she, she probably is going to. Maybe not, though. Maybe she'll be forceful in this one. But not in the same room. You know there's an empty room next to mine, right? The one on the other side of the sliding screen? <laughs> that, those lines sounded like gullible lines, but that face is the skeptical face. Yes, I know, but what about it? Um, that place should be good enough to protect me while I'm asleep, right? <laughs> uh, first of all, the enemy won't come in if we're sleeping in the same room. I mean, that's the point. If you're sleeping in the same room, the enemy won't come in. If you're sleeping in rooms next to each other, then that's not the same room. So, what are you trying to say? <laughs> uh, I suppose the idea, though, even if Shiro has the hots for Rin now, the idea behind not wanting to sleep in the same room as Saber is, well, what if Rin wants to sleep in the same room as me before later and she gets jealous? I don't think Rin would, would worry about that kind of thing, but Shiro thinks Rin would worry about that kind of thing. And also, if Rin was over, I don't think it's that bad, big of a deal for them to, you know, as long as Rin's there, I don't think Saber needs to be there, and then she could do it understandingly, but... <laughs> First of all, the enemy won't come in if we're sleeping in the same room. <laughs> That's your plan, Shiro? Use yourself as bait? Wow! What a... You're going really far for this notion of cooties. What an excuse. So you stand by in the next room so that you can surprise attack the enemy when they come for me. <laughs> Saber wouldn't want that because there's a risk that you get <laughs> attacked. I mean, there's some tactical merit to it, but Saber would want to protect you too much to be okay with that, I feel. Oh, I think this sounds pretty logical. <laughs> it does. But, like, wouldn't she care for your well-being over the strategical merits? To be fair, she's still low on magic and has to take something like that, but I think she would still argue against it initially. Using himself as bait is a classic Shiro strat. True, but I feel like here it's an excuse because he thinks the cooties are a big deal, where in Timeline 1 it would have been more natural to him, whereas I think here he's doing it as a smart excuse that he doesn't necessarily mean, at least not to the same extent. I mean, maybe there's something there, and he does think that... Uh, cooties are more important than making sure he's fully secure. There's definitely still going to be some of that around, but, um... I think this sounds pretty logical. He is reaching so fucking hard. That's fine, right, Saber? Honestly, I don't know about two people sleeping in that small room. It's not that small. We can't physically fit. I think it's bad for a servant to be the cause of her master's lack of sleep. <laughs> you're right, but the real reason for your lack of sleep would be because you're, if you're cooties. That's the real reason you'd have lack of sleep. Just come out and say it, man. Your lack of sleep could be bad if that's, you know, but like... <laughs> uh... Timeline 2 Shiro is decent using smart excuses to excuse hormones. Uh-huh. Hmm, you are rather witty tonight, Shiro. <laughs> yes, he does have wits. Uh, and also, maybe he's a little funny. Which witty do you mean? Oh, he succeeded. <laughs> His excuse works. She realized it was an excuse, but let it happen. Hmm, you are rather witty tonight, Shiro. I understand. It sounds like an excuse to me, but I am fine with that. I will compromise on that plan. <sighs> Oh, phew. <laughs> Good. Man, being a master is hard enough. If I slept in the same room as Saber on top of that, I bet my brain will overheat. <laughs> uh, you hormonal teacher, you. Teacher. Student. Teenager. Not teacher. Teenager. And the chaotic day comes to an end. Ooh, are we about to day transition? That could be a pretty perfect um, beat to end on. We have 20 minutes left. Can we come to the end of the day in 20 minutes? It's becoming more like a habit now, as I trained with Saber until 11 and spent an hour doing my routine in the shed. Think Saber understands the lack of sleep would actually be a problem. It's true, it would be. Um, but that's not the reason he would get his lack of sleep. <laughs> uh.
What even is lack of sleep for sure though? He sleeps fucking four hours a day anyways normally. Four, maybe six most. I cannot sleep six hours. I can sleep, my normal sleep is eight hours. Sometimes I go seven to nine. Uh, seven or nine, I should say. Seven and a half, eight and a half, or whatever. Um, six just doesn't work for me. I've learned by now that if I wake up after six hours, just go back to sleep and let my body sleep for a couple more hours or something. Even if it's hard, let it happen. Um, because if I stay up, my body's just going to get tired and I end up having to go to sleep some point midway in the day anyways, which I don't like happening. I can usually go seven hours and then just wake up properly. Six hours, my body doesn't like that. Um... Now, for some, I found that, weirdly, four hours is like a sweet spot. It doesn't happen much, but if I wake up at exactly the four hour mark, sometimes I can just stay up. Uh, it does not happen, happen often, but, like, if it's five or six hours, I always end up just going back to sleep. If it's four hours, sometimes I'm fine to just stay up. It's weird and it doesn't happen often, but it, sometimes it just happens. Otherwise, though, yeah, um, seven, eight, nine would be the normal for me. It usually eight. Seven and nine don't aren't that uncommon, though. Ten sometimes happens, and I'm not a fan when ten happens, but it does sometimes happen. I guess it balances out the fact that sometimes I get four, um, but ten happens more often than four. Four is really rare. <clears throat> Anyways, sleeping habits. Ugh. <clears throat> I get back to my room when the date changes. I hear Sabres breathing from the next room. Wait, what? Uh, wait, the date already changed? Are we, are we all, <laughs> no, we're technically, that's right, sometimes he even stays back past midnight, and the date doesn't change just yet, that's fair. It, the date changes when he wakes up in the morning. I get back to my room and the date changes, I hear Sabres breathing from the next room. Giggity. That's REM, uh, sleep for ya. Well, sure, uh, I know, but it's just weird that it's like, well, is it, if, if the REM, if my cycle is four hours, then why am I getting seven and nine and does that work fine? And then why does sometimes I wake up at six and then I end up being having to go back to sleep later and sometimes it's hard to get back to sleep immediately and then I just end up with like fucking ten or something and it's like, uh, how dare you, body? Sleep is weird. Ugh. Uh, but at least I think I've solidly learned my patterns enough by now. But sleep is a bit weird. I hear Sabres breathing from the next room. Dash, 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 dash. My heart jumps at that, but I try to calm down as I get into my futon. Just don't sleep. Obviously, easy solution. I've pulled, I want to say, two all-nighters. Well, I don't know if they're all-nighters. I haven't ever pulled a proper all-nighter, I don't think. I haven't stayed up for 24 hours straight, I don't mean. I've occasionally stayed up for like 20 hours straight. Um, uh, 22? Have I hit 22 once? I don't think I've ever stayed up for 24 hours. But I think I hit 22 maybe once. Um, 20 hours I've, I've had happen a few times. Um, I've never done just a full uh, all-nighter where I just don't sleep and then stay up the full next day. That would be something like... 40 hours, you know, because 16 from one day, 16 from the next day, plus the theoretical eight hours of sleep, 40 hours. I don't, I've never stayed up that long. The most I've hit is, you know, about 24. I don't even think I've fully hit 24, but. Oh. Ah. Um, I do, one time it was weird. I will say, you know how four hours sleep is r r rare for me? There was one time where I slept for, I had one of those weird four hour sleeps. And then after that, I stayed up for like 22 hours or something. Um, I had them like both happen at once. Anyways, um, it stuck out to me. But <clears throat> um, my heart jumps at that, but I try to calm down as I get into my futon. I close my eyes, shape, shake off any uh, wicked thoughts, <laughs> peeping on Saber, and tell myself to go to sleep as fast as I can. <laughs> Even this much is hormonally bugging him. Man, I can't sleep that easily. I try not to be uh, conscious of Saber and recall what happened today. The Red School. The boundary field of blood that would have created lots of vic victims if we hadn't stopped it. 
The Red School. What are you focusing on, Shiro? The Boundary Field. Are you thinking about the other timeline and how it was much worse then? Ooh, is this a connection to their timeline, maybe? You're like, you're remembering when it was much worse in that timeline? When there was a bunch more victims? Dash is dash. That causes my restless mind to stop. Do you feel better because you avoided it? Like a hero? Feeling when Timeline 2 Shiro managed to do the thing Timeline 1 Shiro wanted to. Sure, but he still... Like... I mean, Timeline 2 Shiro didn't do it, though. He didn't do it. Caster did it when she, you know, messed with Ryder. That's what Caster did. So there's no reason to think that Shiro's improved in that sense. He hasn't shown a, shown a thing of... He's improved, don't get me wrong. But there's no reason to think, oh, because of Shiro's actions, uh, there were less victims from the Blood Fort thing. It was because of Caster's actions, as far as we know. But... <clears throat> He still feels more like, if this is him having his restless mind stop because there weren't victims, that shows he's more accepting of, oh wow, we saved the day, we did a good thing. That means he's more accepting of the fact that he can be a hero. Uh, to random people, not just to people he cares about. Causes my restless mind to stop. The students on the floor of the red classroom. She was desperately bearing all of it. Ryder on the floor and the students that looked like they were dead. Oh, Rin was bearing it. You're thinking about Rin, okay. Oh, I remember now. At that instant, I figured out the deep part of her. Ooh, of Rin? Ooh, you saw deep into Rin? Did you know? I'll kill you the next time we meet. Yeah, you realized how soft she really is. She is not okay with this death. She puts on a brave face, but she is not okay with it. Because <clears throat> we're enemies, right? She acted as a magus, but she never crossed the final line. Nope, she didn't. Even when she beats you in the other timeline, she wasn't planning to kill you. She was just going to have you lose your memory. She's probably more of a, um, you know, she's probably, if anything, more of the killing virgin than you are at this point. She didn't seem to bat an eye to Shinji being dead, but Shinji's a bit of a dick in the other timeline. Um, I mean, she didn't bat an eye in the other timeline. Shinji's a bit of a dick in both timelines. Um, but yeah. I don't think she's actually... Yeah, Archer even said as much to us as well. She isn't bloodied enough. She's not really okay with the act of killing. Shiro's arguably more okay with it. Especially in this timeline. Now that he has timeline two, one knowledge. And he thinks of himself as better than absolute, you know, dicks. And he did kill Kirei already in timeline one. Rin, as far as we know, has not killed anyone. She's still conflicted with what she is supposed to be responsible to do. This magical you know, lineage she has to take on, the Tosaka name. She never necessarily wanted it. She acts like she does. She acts like she's so proud, but she really hates a lot of it. She's firm, strong-willed, and magnificent, but she's outrageously good-natured. That difference must be her burden. Mm-hmm. How clumsy of her. <laughs> that difference. Are you saying you're not outrageously good-natured? That would be a fair realization. You want to save people to make yourself feel, feel better. Because, you know, if you're outrageously good-natured, it'd be outrageously good-natured that would lead you into being a hero. It would let you be a hero naturally. If you think of yourself as not outrageously good-natured, then that's like admitting that you want to be a hero for your own mental well-being, not because you actually want to be a hero. The more she tries to act as a magus, the more she kills her true self as Tosaka Rin. 100%! I was saying this back in Timeline 1. She's got some uh, issues. They're at odds. Her responsibility of carrying on her father's legacy and what she actually wants to do as Rin are at odds big time. And they never got fully resolved in Timeline 1, but she at least had her relationship with Shira to fall back on, which she seems to value a lot. Because she has some history with him somehow. Oh wait, I can't be talking about other people. I mean, you're not talking about her, you're just thinking about her. <laughs> uh, what, are you going to admit that you have your own problems, problems as well related to this? Self-revelation? I sigh and pull the blanket over my head. Well... 
I guess there's something wrong with me. Oh, 100%. Which part, though? There's multiple things. For thinking that I want to be a support for such a perfect girl. Oh, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with want wanting to save her. That's one way of being a hero. Therapist Shiro. You don't have to save them physically. I mean, saving them physically is fine, but saving them mentally is sometimes more important. Especially in this game, when everyone, everyone's a little mentally fucked up. But you've already fixed your biggest fuck-up. You still have other mental fuck-ups, for sure. But you've already fixed your own biggest mental fuck-up. So I think you're on the route to saving people with your penis now. Your penis and your words. Alright, day changes? Interval level? Level? With two L's? Interval level one. Huh. Unlimited blade works. Okay, perfect beat. I enjoy stopping on day changes, especially when it's around when I would normally stop. We're about 10 minutes early, but I like beats. This is a good beat. So, <clears throat> um, okay. Anti-climax day. Rip. Oh, well. At least Shiro's still smart, and that's cool. Uh, did I spell everything correctly? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Anti-climax day rip. Oh, well, at least Shiro's still smart, and that's cool. Yeah, save. Okay, so it kind of hurts even more for me that this was an anti-climax day where there wasn't an actual, um, you know, there wasn't an actual big fight or whatever because I had the weekend. Like, I probably could have kept going for a little bit at least, and then as soon as they got to the following part last time, theoretically, I could have, uh, if I had timed it better, I could have stopped knowing that we were at falling action and let the, let me be at falling action for the weekend break. Having me... I guess I fucked myself in that way, but, it, you know, I couldn't have known. Um, I do think it happened, it was kind of poorly handled regardless, but I think my own personal circumstances made it worse for me personally. Because I built up in my head that, oh, this will be really interesting. Shiro and, you know, Rin, they're going to, like, work together. Maybe they might have to work together to fight a caster-controlled saber. Caster might have a new weapon that might mean something. Or there's some kind of plot twist going on. What could it be? What's this fight going to be like? I kept thinking that over the weekend, there was no fight. So I think, you know, I built that up in my head. It made it even more worse for me, even though I do think it was handled kind of poorly. Regardless, it was even worse for me because of the timing circumstances. But, um, uh, but, uh, yeah. So I will see you guys next time. Still another outro phrase for YouTube audience. The video's over. Um, okay. Um... Uh, what was this? I was still thinking about Archer and his deal during this period of the story. I mean, I'm thinking about Archer and his deal, but I'm thinking about a lot of things. And I thought that this, you know, was a fight. And I was excited for the fight. And they just sidestep the fight entirely. I definitely didn't expect that. But, anyways, um, see you guys next time. Still no natural phrase. Video's over.